Hello and welcome to yet another edition of the Focal Point. I'm Bart Kakoza. A good number of people in Uganda know Mr. Museveni in his capacity as president. In other words, very few people know his other side of life. Sometime back, I spent one day with His Excellency on his farm. Now join me as I take you on a trip to discover Museveni, the Uncle Hard's man. There must be some... For now, forget about Museveni, the guerrilla freedom fighter. Of the movement, when it comes to power, must be connected with rehabilitation. Forget about Museveni, the professional military general. Forget the tough-talking Museveni. Very, very carefully, because I don't speak just because I want words to come out of my mouth. Uh, you know, I always mean what I say. Forget about Museveni, the politician. And meet Museveni, the Ankole Hearts man. Located approximately 150 kilometers the northwest of Uganda's capital Kampala, is Jesus Ranch. The 10 square miles ranch is owned by President Museveni. According to him, he bought it from a Ugandan businessman 15 years ago. While it is his personal private business, the ranch also doubles as President Museveni's private resort, where he takes his vacations. At the time of the acquisition, the ranch was stocked with exotic and crossbred animals. Museven decided to get rid of them and restock it with the traditional longhorn Ankole Kato, which he passionately cherishes. Today, the ranch is stocked with over 4,000 heads of these species, which he says is superior, but disappearing at the expense of the exotic Frisians and the crossbred ones. He reasons that the exotic ones pollute the genes of the indigenous breed. While here, President Museven interacts with the local cattle keepers to strategize on improving the species. Well, are these people from the neighboring place here or they are your relatives? No, 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 these, these people, they are my, my friends, but they cooperate with me in, um, in, in breeding the Ankole cow. So I normally invite them so that they can help me identify the good bulls from their own herds or from wherever they go. Because you know the Ankore cow had got off, has, has sort of got neglected. But uh, it is a superior cow to these European cows. Uh, therefore, when, uh, when we came out of the civil wars, we decided to, I decided to revive the breeding. So these people helped me. They are my friends, but they helped me to, to identify good bulls, bu good bulls from, the, because the peasants are the ones who had remained with the stock. Uh, of course, I had also remained with my own cows, but they bring in fresh, uh, fresh, fresh uh, genes. President Museven says he moved here with 690 heads of cattle and each year about 700 animals are born. He controls this multiplication capacity by selling 700 every year. Although it is fenced, it cannot be described as a modern ranch. The cows graze entirely on natural grass and there are no demarcated paddocks. So how big is this farm? This one. Mm. Uh, 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 this man is going to die. No, he's not going to die, he's you, your excellent. Mm. So how big is this? Just move Ali. This is 10 square miles. 10 square miles. Mm -hmm. 
What what they call this place? They call it uh, the the county is Gomba. Mm. My farm is in, in two districts, mm. but neighbor in okay. uh, this part is uh, the Gomba, in Fiji district. Yeah. There are five square miles here, okay. and then across the river, across Katonga, but but uh, almost adjacent. Okay. Is uh, another piece. Which is uh, again five square miles, and uh, it, but that one is in Zimbabwe district, okay. in Maogola, Maogola County. So how how is it demarcated? How do you take care of it without getting people to encroach over it? The whole land is fenced. Oh, I, the whole all square miles. Oh yes. Fenced. Fenced and you see with another. barbed wire. Yes, barbed wire and. Uh, Fire break to ensure, that, you know, a road to ensure that uh, the fire mm. does not come to, to destroy the the grass okay. during the dry season. It's all, it's all fenced. So, about how many, how many, how many hives of cut do you have on this farm? Yes, sir. I know in, in Banyankore you no, don't, no, no, don't no. count cows, but I... Don't, don't tell me that. <laughs> I believe that's what they say. No. Yeah. They, did, they did not know how to control diseases, that's why they... That's why they didn't want to count. Uh -huh. the, the cows were dying from disease, they thought they were dying from eh? from counting. So can I be private to that that information? There are 4,000 cows here. 4,000 cows? Yeah. 4,000 heads of cows. <laughs> The origin of Ankole cows is associated with an old tradition. According to the tradition, 500 years ago, a man from a pastoralist Hima ethnicity appeared from nowhere with his herds of cattle and settled among the Ankole Beiru people, who were then general land cultivators. He introduced the long horned cattle. All his descendants and clansmen had herds of cattle. Traditionally, among the Ankole people, Wealth was measured in terms of number of cattle one owns. It was very prestigious to own many cows, and this elevated his status in society. That battle explains why Museven passionately loves the Ankole cows, and more still, owning many. Traditionally, cows provided everything for the Ankole people. They rarely killed an animal for meat, Instead, they would sell them to traders or butchers. They drank milk and made ghee from it. Perhaps the best moment in their lives was that time when the cattle owner would take time off to look at his herds. They still do. They believe that being among their herds relaxes their minds and treats stress. They also believe that the odor emitted from the animal bodies and the dung is medicinal. That's why Museven takes time off to go and be among his herds with his herdsmen. Do you come here as a form of running away from stress or you you like no. looking at your cows? No, I don't check my cows out there, so but this is my work, this is my job. Yeah, okay. This helping me is not my job, it's because you're in a mess. <laughs> so when I, I have to leave my, my cows, I have to leave my my cows to chase a me. Because I mean was fishing. Finishing just so that we can also do our own things. When did you acquire this farm? This one I acquired it in bits, this particular one. 
but I started in 1990. Perhaps his greatest pleasure and most private moment is watching his cows. It is a passion that makes up for his little enthusiasm for music and dancing. By his own confession, Museven last actively danced in the 1960s and had to chase himself off the floor after repeatedly stepping on partner's toes. Museven claims to know almost all his cows and most of these cows have names and all of them are branded with YKM, Yoel Kaguta Museven initials. For example, he says the oldest cow on the ranch called Rubindi is 18 years old. He likens this to a parent knowing his children's names. How, how do you get to know about all your cows and I was told that you know them by your name, by their name. Uh, this is my way of life. I can't forget my children just because I'm working for the regime, for the government. <laughs> These are like my... I know, I know them, except the young ones, which, which are born when I'm not here. So, I, I have a feeling that maybe they... Yeah. It is also time for him to sell off some of the cows and make money. While here, Museven personally meets traders who are interested in buying some animals. He also invites some local residents to accompany him on a cow watching exercise. Managing such a large ranch, let alone the one owned by the president, can be very challenging. Navasa is the main man here. How do you manage it, such a big? How do you move around? Uh, moving around is simple. I have, uh, I don't have to move around all the time. I have some few friends whom I work with, and they can manage parts of the farm. So they can always give me reports, and I go in whenever it is uh, so necessary. How does it feel to be a manager for the president's farm? It is uh, a job like any other job. Sure, I don't think it is. I think it is. Uh, it is not any different mm. from other jobs. It is the same. Do you get stressed by the president coming down here? Too? There is no stress because actually I get a chance because he sees what I'm doing and uh, I get relieved. Otherwise, when he's away, that's when I get stressed because I'm always worried about how he'll feel when he reaches here. How you feel about the work I've done? How often do you get to see him? Mm, not so often, but uh, he comes like four times a year. So today you have people who are coming to buy cows. How often do you sell cows? We sell uh, whenever it is necessary. Yeah. What do you mean by whenever it's necessary? When we need money, when we need to cull animals. That's when we sell. How often do you say, how many cows do you say that to go for example? For example, today you've got people who are coming to buy. How many are you going to sell? It depends on how much money we need and uh, uh, how many we need to call. So it's not a specific number. Does the president give you orders to sell whatever or you take your own decision? No, he has to identify the animals he wants to sell. Yes. So, yes. He identifies the animals he wants, he to, wants sell. to sell. And it's not me, because I'm not the owner. Uh, yeah. and you are quite independent, aren't you? Not so much independent, I have supervisors. Although relatively large animals, the Ankole cows do not give a lot of milk, like their fresh and exotic counterparts. On average, a cow yields between 7 to 10 liters of milk per day. Museven does not sell the milk. He instead gives it to his herdsmen and their families who live on this ranch. Ankoli cows are known to be very resistant to cattle diseases. They can survive in drought and their meat has been discovered to have low cholesterol. Your Excellency, you, you seem to have a lot of data about the, the quality of meat, the quality of beef of the Ankoli cows. Mm -hmm. How did you get to, to know about it? Well, I, 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 uh, we slaughter the cows, but 
studies were made in Texas by the Americans who, who, who stole some cows from here. And they found that this was, uh, was the best beef in the world. Because it has got the local cholesterol, it has got yellow fat, and it, it is well marbled, it is well mixed with the meat fiber. So why, have, why hasn't the Western world developed interest? Because they are looking for local cholesterol food. It has not been promoted enough. They are eating junk. They are eating bad foods. President Museven treats going abroad for vacation with disdain. He says he never goes for vacations abroad. To the Riviera or the Caribbean like other African presidents do, he claims his ranch is the best place in the world for him to be for relaxation. Uganda is the best place in the world. It has got the best climate, the best temperatures, the best scenery. How can I demote myself? from the highest to some of lower quality place called Bahamas or, or, or Nice. This is the first quality. Number one. Number two, when I'm here, I'm not only just relaxing, I'm also making money. So relaxation plus 10% is not a bad idea. Your Excellency, what do you find so fascinating about the Ankole cows? They are, first of all, they are bigger. They, they are bigger. They have got a very good skin. The skin is more elastic. They, they have got yellow fat. They, are, they, they have got low cholesterol. They have got better milk. That's why they are better. And they look, they look more beautiful. Your Excellency, when you look at all these cows, do you buy... Or any standards consider yourself to be a rich man? Oh, certainly. I'm not a poor man. <laughs> uh, I'm not a poor man and I've, not been, I've never been a poor man. Where do you derive your passion for cattle? Well, yes, it is uh, the, certainly from our, our heritage. Part of our heritage. Uh, we are cattle people here. And we, in the past we used to eat only animal products. We didn't eat other things. So the, it has got a lot to do with that. Are you preparing this ranch for your final retirement place? Here? Yes. I will retire here and, and uh, work it out. At the ranch, Museven likes driving himself around. I had an opportunity of taking a ride on his sleek Land Cruiser in the co-driver's seat. Although he likes coming here to relax, he spends most of the time listening to complaints and requests from local residents. Along the way, the drive was constantly interrupted by villagers who waved him down. They presented their complaints and problems ranging from personal, family and political. The president would wind down the window to listen to their complaints and summon his aides to bring them to the farmhouse where he would personally attend to them. I asked him why he was loading all the village problems on his shoulders. Museven explains that because of the absence of the welfare system, villagers automatically believe that leaders have to solve their problems and you cannot simply ignore them. Seven says that when he gets out of active politics, he plans to retire to this ranch. Well, that's all we had time for from the Focal Point desk. Make sure to tune in next time for yet another exciting edition of the Focal Point. I'm Batka Koza, wishing you a pleasant evening. <laughs>